Webcam movie review, number one. Look at the high tech. Green Zone is the name of the movie directed by Paul Greengrass and starring Matt Damon. These are the two guys that made the Bourne films, that is, the second two Bourne films, The Bourne Supremacy and The Bourne Ultimatum, my two least favorite of the genre. And they're back for Green Zone, which is filmed with the same neorealistic camera, but this one is based on a true story. That true story, of course, being the Iraq War in 2003, right after the U.S. invasion. So Greengrass is using the same shaky cam style that he used in the Bourne movies uh, and that he also used uh, to greater effect in Bloody Sunday and United 93, which were also very docudrama uh, true stories. It's an action movie, but it's an action movie about something. And it comes from the point of view of one very effective person. That's a soldier played by Matt Damon. And this soldier is questioning why there's no WMDs in Iraq. Hmm, I wonder... Rather than framing the story around politicians or journalists or the same kind of thing that we've seen before in other political thrillers, everything's pretty much discovered by this one soldier. It may be a little bit unrealistic to think that this soldier, uh, played by Matt Damon, is going to go in and figure out exactly who's lying to who and where the information is coming from as far as the WMDs being in Iraq is concerned. And in that respect, I guess you could say it's a little bit too much like uh, 24. Minus all the same plot devices that you see every week that have been recycled for seven seasons. I mean, it does all happen in one day, right guys? Also, this movie was shot by Barry Aykroyd, who is the cinematographer for The Hurt Locker, and a lot of these scenes actually do retain some of that really tense uh, uh, feeling that you got out of The Hurt Locker, where these people are just in these awful situations, and they've got to get out of them. One of the most effective things that this movie does is make you sympathize with the Iraqis. A couple of uh, really effective scenes with an Iraqi who helps out uh, Damon's character really kind of bring that into focus. At the same time, however, there's some pretty bad dialogue from Damon and Brendan Gleeson and Greg Kinnear that seems to just kind of sum up the themes of the film over and over again. That's the only thing that matters! The reasons! It's all we have! So while the Hurt Locker avoided a lot of political statements, I think the Green Zone is actually just trying to make one. This is a very political film. It's just not current. In fact, some people in America might find it downright irrelevant. I mean, you still have your requisite skilled action sequences with a, a certain amount of shaky cam where you don't know what's going on, but you also get this real feeling of, of place and time. I'm sure a lot of it had to be CGI'd in there, but I really felt like I was in Iraq in 2003 and those crumbling palaces and, and everything, uh, and this kind of dirty sense of entitlement that the Americans had. I mean, they were in the presidential palace lounging by the pool, some of them. It's really kind of disgusting. Through it all, Damon is square-jawed and noble. Sometimes the score is really distracting. I mean, before in uh, United 93, uh, there wasn't hardly any music in there at all, and when it was there, it really didn't command attention. It was just there to kind of, you know, get, get, get a certain mood across. In this movie, it really seems like uh, Greengrass is a little bit more desperate um, to ramp up suspense for a Hollywood audience, and in that way, I think it's, uh, it's a little bit insulting. So, to sum up, Green Zone is a minor rock fist up for me. It has a lot of the uh, signature Paul Greengrass stuff that we've come to expect. Uh, I don't think overall it's as involving as some of his other stuff, uh, but it's still a minor rock fist up. It's, it's good work. So there you have it. No clips. Webcam review number one in the bag. Hope you liked it.